Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of what to look for in the night sky. We're looking at the week of December 9th uh, this time around. So it's a big moon week. The uh, moon's going to be waxing toward full and washing out a lot of the sky. We'll start right on the evening of the 9th. So this is Monday evening. Get out there. And what you can see for the rest of the week, you will be able to see uh, Venus, Fomalhaut, and Saturn there together. But the moon joins them there on the 9th. That's why we have this labeled on the 9th. If you get out on the 10th or the 11th, you can still see this. So it's, it's getting dark. I, you know, it's 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock uh, in the evening for most of us here. So talking about me in the middle of the United States. Uh, so we're, it gets dark for me. So uh, let's say 5.30, I'm outside or 6 o'clock. And I look to the southwest. By far, the biggest, brightest thing that's out there is Venus. So Venus is dominating the southwest sky. Get out and enjoy it. It's pulled well away from the sun. I've been watching Venus uh, since August, right? Uh, and so, and there we had to go dig it out of the haze, out of the glow of the sun. And now it's really widely separated out there. It's up for a while after sunset. Easy to see in the evening sky. If you drop back to the to the west, no, to the east, excuse me. If you drop back to the east and south, you'll come across a relatively bright star, and it's about 335 degrees, so it's three or four fists at arm's length away from Venus, tracking back to the east and, and fading a little bit south. You come to Fomalhaut, and those of you who've been watching these for a long time know that's one of my favorite stars because it's of all of the really bright stars in the sky, it's the southernmost that I can see. So it never gets very high above the horizon. And here's a good opportunity to see it, you know, three or four fist widths at arm's length away from, uh, from Venus back this direction. And then you go straight up from there about two fist widths, 21 degrees, and you got Saturn. And so it makes a triangle. You got Venus, Fomalhaut, and Saturn up there. Saturn's the brightest object. In, it's not a super bright object, but it's the brightest object in its region of the sky right now. There aren't any other bright stars around it. So these should pop out pretty well, depending on how far north you live. The further south you live, the easier it is to see Fomalhaut here. And so the triangle's about 35 degrees, 40 degrees, and 20 degrees uh, for the sides right there. You go about half that distance. You can go from Venus to Saturn, 40 degrees. And you go about half that distance again, another 20 degrees, and there's the moon uh, on the 9th. The moon's tracking off to the east as it does every night, so on so the 10th or the 11th, it'll be long gone. Uh, but on the 9th, there it is, and you can see. One of the things that I always appreciate there is this idea to say, uh, we think about the plane of the ecliptic. We think about the plane of the solar system. Uh, everything orbits in a, in a relatively flattened plane. It's not an infinitely narrow plane. It's got some width to it, and it's got some, some angular tilt relative to that ecliptic path, our apparent path of the sun across the sky. But you can see that by the fact that the, the objects of the solar system, most of the objects of the solar system, uh, they can be seen in sort of a straight line, a straight on, a, on the inside of a sphere, right? A uh, spherical geometry line. You can see them straight across there, and you get a really good appreciation of that. You go Venus to Saturn right on to the moon right here, and you see the, the arc, the straight line that those things make across the sky, how they're lined up on the sky here tonight. And so this, this is great to see. Uh, the the moon, two-thirds full, is sitting next to a series of fourth-magnitude stars uh, that we think of as the circlet of Pisces. So the moon is sitting in Pisces, and these four stars just off to the west of the moon tonight. Uh, the moon's going to wash them out a little bit. They're not going to be trivial to see. You probably want binoculars or something to help you see them with the, the moon glowing. The moon's not, you know, two-thirds full. The moon's not like a full moon. But it's out there washing the sky out, and you got this circlet of Pisces, these, this series of fourth magnitude stars. See if you can find those stars. And then try, use, the, use, use Venus to Saturn and keep, learn those stars. As the moon moves away, it gets easier to see those stars again, but the moon's going to be filling out and washing out the sky. And so, but, but keep track of those. A week from now, when the moon has tracked all the way away, uh, the upper right corner of here, go, go over and up about that amount, and there's a fine elliptical galaxy in there, NGC 7619. You got a little telescope, you want to go poking around and look for a, an external galaxy, there's a good one for you to try to use the circlet of Pisces to find. So that's what we got for you on the 9th. 
The next night, uh, on the, mo- the evening of the 10th into the morning of the 11th, now the moon's three quarters full, so the moon's actually up most of the night now. So you can do this before or after midnight. Uh, on the 10th into the 11th, the moon skims past Zeta Piscium, so still in Pisces, but it, it's, it gets within a degree uh, of Zeta. And, and a lot of objects do this. Zeta's right on the ecliptic. It's right on this path this line that connects the, these objects. And so the moon will graze Zeta Piscium or pass in front of Zeta Piscium. Uh, the planets will get in this region of the sky uh, relatively frequently. So we'll keep our eye on this. But Zeta Piscium, so, so it grazes right by Zeta Piscium. Uh, look for Zeta just below the moon there. Zeta's a fine, fine, fine uh, binary star, fine double star for a, a small telescope. So they're separated by 23 arc seconds. A degree is 60 arc minutes. And one arc minute is 60 arc seconds, so it's a third of an arc minute is the separation of these stars. Any telescope is going to pull those apart. Whatever telescope you have, you'll be able to see this binary. The B star, we think of the A star as the brighter of that binary st- pair. The B star, the, the fainter, is actually a spectroscopic binary. We talked about spectroscopic binaries last week, where you can see the spectral lines in the stars Doppler shifting back and forth. Blue, blue shift, red shift, bl- uh, no shift. Red shift, blue shift. And so you see these lines shifting back and forth. We drew the graph of wavelength as a function of, I don't even remember which star we were talking about last week. We were talking about some spectroscopic binary, and I think it had a period of about nine days like this one does. So this is a spectroscopic binary. We can't see the individual stars. We just see when we break the light up into the component colors, we see dark absorption lines, and we see those dark absorption lines moving around from what we call the Doppler shift from the as the star moves toward you, that the wavelength gets to be shorter, and as the star moves away from you, the wavelength gets to be longer. So for the second week in a row, we got a spectroscopic binary that pops up in the things we're looking at. But go ahead and check that out. Uh, Zeta's, Zeta should hold up to the moonlight okay tonight, and so you should be able to see those stars. It's great. Uh, on the 12th into the 13th, the moon shoots right between <laughs> two fourth magnitude stars in Aries. Delta and Epsilon Arietis. Whether you can see them or not, I don't know, because the moon's going to be obnoxious by this time at 90 to 95% full. It's going to be brightening the sky out so much. But with optical aid, with the right uh, binoculars or something, you might be able to see those two stars as the moon passes through there. Uh, Then, on the 14th into the 15th, the moon will be sitting between the night before, the 13th and the 14th, the moon will be over here relative to Jupiter. So Jupiter's big, bright, big, bright object in Taurus the Bull. And the moon starts the night closer to Jupiter, and as the night wears on toward morning, watch the moon head toward El Nath. Remember, uh, we think uh, think of Taurus as these two Vs of stars with Aldebaran down here and uh, uh, and, and, and the the two Vs that stretch out, and El Nath is the end. We think of those as the horns of the bull uh, stretching out that way. El Nath is the end star in the top row of that V. Uh, we, We talk about it a lot because... It's close to the ecliptic, and these stars, uh, the moon and planets, scoot by El Nath quite a bit. And the moon's doing that here on the 14th into the 15th. Now, as you look west, one more thing to think about. So that's our moon tracking through some, some double stars and planets to look at. And as, you, as evening, when you're out in the evening and you look to the west, we see the summer triangle. It looks something like this. You've got Vega, Deneb, and Altair, these three bright summer triangle stars hanging into the, in the southwest. So we're looking over here southwest. Uh, and, and we see Vega down here, Deneb up here, and Altair here. They're going to be the three brightest stars there. Uh, this is off a little bit to the west of uh, Venus uh, that we were looking at here. Now, Vega is an interesting object. We talk about this every time this time of year, and we'll do it again. But Vega, I've been watching in the morning. So you go out in the evening, and you see the summer triangle. And Vega's been clear for me, very easy to see in the morning. Deneb should be there very soon. Uh, and so we see right now, Vega sets at about 10 p.m.-ish. Uh, so you've got plenty of time after it gets dark to go out, several hours after it gets dark to go out and see uh, Vega against the east western horizon. And then in the morning, it rises 3.30 or 4. And so you're out at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock. We have such long, dark, dark nights here now. Rises at 3 or 4. You can watch it popping over the eastern horizon. And I've been enjoying watching Vega as I look to the, the north, sort of east in the morning, seeing Vega climb over our local hills. We live in a valley here. We live in a bowl. And so we don't have great horizons in any direction. Uh, we've got sort of hills around us. To the west is our best horizon. But, but in terms of being able to see things quickly as they pop over the horizon. But I've, I've been seeing Vega easily at, at 5 o'clock in the morning. 
uh, 5.30 in the morning uh, when I'm out there. So it's well up into the sky. Deneb will follow, and then keep an eye out when will you see Altair. For me, Altair's far enough south, it takes longer for it to pop around. But this is a great time where we can see these objects in the evening. The Earth is rotated around, and we see these objects in the, in the morning again. So I, I always love that this time of year. So here we go. That's what we got. Uh, you got Saturn and Venus and Fomalhaut and the moon, and the moon passing beautiful binary star Zeta Piscium, and then the moon passing through Aries and into Taurus and near Jupiter and El Nath. Enjoy the summer triangle, and hope you have great observing week ahead. As always, thanks for watching, everybody.